Welcome back to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do exposure blending with Blendif. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you one of my favorite features of Photoshop. It's called Blend If, and basically how this works is it allows you to make any layer visible either in the highlights, midtones, and shadows of your image. Now, this is incredibly helpful because it'll allow you to do things like brighten up your shadows or bring information back from your highlights. So if you've ever found yourself with an overexposed or underexposed image, this technique is going to work wonders. We got an awesome tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So we've got a great example photo here that you can actually download, just follow the link right down below. And this is very common in which we'll have like the foreground elements will be relatively dark because the camera is exposing for whatever's going on in the background. So anytime you have that difference of exposure, this technique is gonna come in really handy. So the first thing I wanna do is just gonna give you a tour around how this actually works and then we're going to exposure correct this image. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer and I'm gonna use my brush tool here to just paint a couple colors. So we're just gonna start with white there we go. And we're gonna start by painting white right over top of our image. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab a color. Let's just grab a bright red color. Fantastic. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab black. Let's paint black on the top here. I just wanna give you a good idea of how this actually works. So. On this new layer, first thing we need to do is get to blend if. Now that's actually located in your blending options within the layer. So you can double click here in this gray area, which will bring up your layer style and blending options, or you can click right here where it says FX and go to blending options. Okay, so here in our layer options, on the bottom right, let's just get everything so you can see it. On the bottom right, we have what's called blend if, and we have a couple of different sliders. So let's go ahead and show you how these sliders work to start with. Now, the top slider will actually, as I click and drag this, you can see as soon as I grabbed it, my black disappeared. As I continue to go from left to right, my red disappears and then I go all the way there and most of my, basically anything that's not pure white completely disappears. So black first, then red, then white are disappearing. Now, if I go from the other side, white is gonna disappear and then red and then everything that's not pure black. So what this is doing is basically choosing the visibility of my layer based on the light information, okay? So white being the brightest, red being about in the middle and black being the darkest. Now, let's go ahead and see how that looks like with the other slider because that's based just on the information of this layer. Using my other slider, I can grab information from the left-hand side, and you're gonna see it's gonna to start to disappear from the dark areas on the underlying image, okay? Basically just showing up in the light areas. And you can see here, it's just visible in the sky of our background. So if I go from the other side, we can click and drag, and it's gonna to start to disappear from the light areas of my image and only show up in the dark areas. So this is incredibly useful because any layer based on the values of the layer itself or the rest of your image, you can make visible based on the light, midtones, and dark information. Now, at this point, it doesn't look that great. Like if I grab this and just drag it over here, that's not that useful because it's pretty harsh. But what we need to do is hold Alt or Option and click and drag, and this is gonna introduce feathering. So if you just have one little slider, what you need to do is hold Alt or Option, click and drag, and now you've got two sliders. So as I bring this from the left to the right, you're gonna see now it's fading away from the shadows and becoming visible in the highlights. Or if I do it from the other side, it's gonna fade away from the highlights and become visible in the shadows. But it's much more, uh, it, it's much more smooth now. And I can even grab this other side and really just say, hey, I want to only be visible in this range. Okay, now you can also use these in conjunction with each other. So I could take away the dark information. There we go. And have both of these sliders working for us. So this is a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and hit cancel. You can see there's our before. There are so many different ways you can use this tool. And one of the big ones is actually helping out your exposure in your photographs. So let's go ahead and show you how to do it. 
We're just gonna delete this layer. We don't need it anymore. And now we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. So let's go to our adjustment layer and go to curves. Now with our curves adjustment layer, I'm just gonna click here in the center and go ahead and bring this area up. So we've got more information here now in our shadows. But the problem here is that it's making our highlights brighter as well. It's just making the whole image brighter. And in this case, it's kind of blowing out some information in the sky. Like we don't really want that, right? I want my shadows to get brighter, but I don't want the highlights to get brighter. So this is exactly what Blend If is for. Let's go ahead and double click right here. Now, earlier we were just on a regular layer, but this time I'm gonna use this on an adjustment layer. So what I wanna do is make this adjustment layer disappear from the highlights, right? I just wanna brighten up my shadows. So we're gonna hold Alt or Option. I'm gonna click and drag from the right to the left here, and look at this, it just disappears from my highlights, just like that. Now, we just hit okay, I mean, that, that was literally just it. So you can see here, it's brightening up the shadows and leaving the highlight information alone. So we're able to really fine tune this, I think something like that looks really good, and just have it be visible where we want. Now, of course, you can continue on with this. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of color toning to our highlights. So we're gonna grab another curves adjustment layer. There we go. And in this case, I'm gonna just give us a little bit of red here. So we're gonna click on a red channel and bring that up a little bit. I'm gonna go to my blue channel and just click and drag this down a little bit, which is gonna warm up my image. Now, again, this is visible everywhere, not a horrible thing, but let's just say I wanna warm up the highlights of my image, like where the light is actually touching. So we can double click here. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and now click and drag from the left and go to the right. Check that out. So here's a little preview. There's the before, everything is warmer, and there's the after. Basically, I'm just hiding this from the shadow areas of my image. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And I'm gonna turn this off and on and you can see what we've done. We've warmed up the highlights in my image, which looks like warm sunlight is coming through the window. And that's really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and show the before and after. Let's just turn these both off and then back on. Huge difference we're able to make. This is incredibly useful for so many different types of photographs. Really what we're doing is just controlling whether it's visible in the shadows, midtones, or the highlights. This works on regular layers, type layers, adjustment layers, any type of layer you have in Photoshop, you can use Blend If to control your exposure. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tip. This is actually one of my favorite things to do in Photoshop. It's just so incredibly useful for just about any photo you throw at it. Now, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and join 30 Days of Photoshop. You can do that by following the link right down below. You'll get a calendar with a list of episodes. You'll get daily email reminders and you get all the sample images so you can download them and follow along as well as bonus assets. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.